Hey guys, and welcome back to another video from The Modern Vet, aka Dr. Armstrong. I have some really great news for you guys, and that is that Vet Prep and I have collaborated to provide more content that will be very useful for those who are preparing for the NAVLI for the first time, or for those of you who have to take it over. I think this content will be very helpful for those who are here in the US as well as overseas. This is going to help you tremendously. So let's get into it. Today's video is all about acid-base status. So the content in this video is mainly for those who are sitting for the boards, okay? So in other words, you need high yield information. You probably don't need to get into all the nitty gritty, but just enough so that you can go from, come on, so I don't really know why. Two. No, don't worry, boo, I got you. Generally speaking, the whole point of assessing your patient's blood gas status or doing the blood gas analysis is to get an idea of how severe a disease process is, as well as to help you determine your treatment intervention. So the four components of the acid-base status are metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, alkalosis. So what is the difference between the four? Because I know when I first started learning about it, I was just like, mm -mm. So metabolic acidosis, simply means that there is not enough bicarb. There's too much acid, all right? Not enough bicarb, too much hydrogen ions floating around. Metabolic alkalosis simply means that we have way too much bicarb and not enough acid. So there are disease processes that can create that imbalance between bicarb or base and acid. Now, respiratory acidosis means that there is too much carbon dioxide. Respiratory alkalosis means that there is too little carbon dioxide. So these two systems, the metabolic system and the respiratory system, are managed, are fine-tuned, and anytime there is an imbalance, anytime the equilibrium is disturbed, whether it's too much or too little, we got a problem. So as it pertains to the NABLI, whenever you get an acid-base question, they're not going to expect you to memorize the normal values for pH, for carbon dioxide, for bicarbonate. They're not gonna expect you to remember it. However, it's not a bad idea to kind of know the ranges. So for example, for pH, you see that the pH says 7.2, right off the bat, you should automatically think that's, that's abnormal. If you see a pH in a question that's 7.6, you should again know that's abnormal. Hmm, that's giving alkalosis. That's why it's important to have an idea of what the ranges are, even if you cannot really commit them fully, fully to memory, have an idea. Okay, so when you get your acid-base question, where do you start? Where, where do you start? As it pertains to the NAVLI, you're gonna ask yourself two questions. The first question is, is there an acid-base disturbance? If there isn't an acid-base disturbance, then you already know how to answer the question. But if there is an acid-base disturbance, then the next question that you're going to ask yourself is, well, what's the primary issue? Is the patient in a state of alkalosis or is the patient in a state of acidosis? The first thing that we have to ask ourselves again is, is there an acid-base disturbance? To figure that out, you first must look at the pH. Consider the pH of the patient's blood. This piece of information, this simple number, will let us know if there is an acid-base disturbance or not. So if the pH is out of the normal reference range, then yes, there is an acid-base disturbance. Too high means alkalosis, too low means acidosis. So if the pH is too high, like 7.6 or 7.7, .7. not only is that not compatible with life, but also the patient is in a state of alkalosis. If the pH is too low, like 7.2, 7.1, 6.8 even, again, that pH is probably not compatible with life. And also the patient is in a serious state of acidosis. All right, so great. So now you know that you must look at the pH as a way to figure out if there is an acid-base disturbance present. Now you also know, based on where the pH is on that spectrum, if it's too high, the patient is in a state of alkalosis, and if it's too low, the patient is in a state of acidosis. Now the next thing is, well, what kind of alkalosis, what kind of acidosis? Is it metabolic or is it respiratory? So if the patient is in a state of alkalosis based on the pH, and the bicarb or the bicarbonate is increased, then that is metabolic alkalosis. Likewise, if the patient is in a state of alkalosis and you see that 
oh, bicarb is normal, but the carbon dioxide or the PCO2 is pretty low, then that means that the patient is in a state of respiratory alkalosis. If you have determined, on the other hand, that the patient is in a state of acidosis and you look at your bicarb and see that the bicarb is pretty low, then that means that the patient is in a state of metabolic acidosis. Likewise, if you're looking at the pH and determine that the patient is in a state of acidosis, you look at the bicarb and you're like, well, it's normal, but the carbon dioxide is pretty high, then you can determine that the patient is in a state of respiratory acidosis. Okay, time for an example. You are evaluating the blood work of a dog that is hit by a car. These are the following findings. Bicarb is 12 millimoles per liter with the range of 17 to 24 millimoles per liter. Total carbon dioxide is 14 millimoles per liter with the range being 14 to 26. And lactate is 2.3 millimoles per liter with the range being 0.5 to 2.0. Now, what is your assessment? I'm gonna take this second to point out and remind you guys that there is a difference between PCO2 and TCO2. The TCO2 is considered the total carbon dioxide and kind of goes hand in hand with bicarb, whereas the PCO2 stands for a partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and that has to, everything to do with the body's ability to ventilate. Now, let's just say you have completely blanked and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know what lactate is. I don't even know what it measures. Oh my gosh. What are you going to do? So you're not going to panic. You're just going to breathe three times. You're going to tell yourself, well, what is this question asking me? The question is asking you, are we dealing with metabolic, respiratory, acidosis, or alkalosis? Which are the four? So now you remember, all right, well, in order for me to figure out what state the patient is in, I need to know what the pH is, and I need to know what's going on with the, with the bicarb, and I need to know what's going on with the carbon dioxide. That's it. Okay, save that lactate for another question. Okay, so it'll come back in your brain then. But for the sake of this question, when you got 20 seconds on the clock, tick tock, okay? You don't need to be worrying about information that is not necessary for the sake of the question that you're answering. You also don't need to be worrying about what brought the patient in, whether they were hit by a car, whether they ate a whole bunch of ice cream, whatever the presenting complaint is, that's not what's important. What's important is using the parameters that you know you need to use in order to answer what is being asked of you. So remember, we said we need pH, we need bicarb, and we need carbon dioxide. But look and see how tricky this question is. There is no pH. So, all right, so then the mind should say, all right, there's no pH. What are the other things that I know I need to answer this question? I need to know what the bicarb is, and I need to know what the carbon dioxide is, right? Like what's going on with those two parameters? So let's look. So the bicarb is 12. The range for normal is 17 to 24. Right off the bat, what is that telling you? Is this patient in a state of acidosis or alkalosis? Not enough bicarb, it's acidosis. And again, we're not looking at the lactate. So right off the bat, this patient is in a state of acidosis. Now, how do we determine if it's metabolic or respiratory? Well, remember with respiratory, we're only looking at the carbon dioxide. And with metabolic, we are looking at our bicarb. So if in this question, without the use of our pH, if the bicarb is low, that means the patient is in a state of acidosis, bicarb, metabolic. Therefore, the answer to this question is the patient is in a state of metabolic acidosis. So now we're going to do a second practice question. Interpret the following blood gas results from a four-year-old female spay dog. The base excess is negative eight with the normal range there. The anion gap is 18 with the normal range there. The pH is 7.3 with the normal range present. And the PCO2 equals 29 with the normal range listed. So the answer choices are metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, normal, metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis, or metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis. Your brain might be telling you, panic, but I'm here to say, do not panic, breathe, 
count to three, then take it step by step. Based on the answer choices, again, it's just asking you what state is this patient in? Metabolic alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, respiratory or otherwise. Just like the previous question, lactate was thrown in there. Now, yes, whenever you're doing your blood gas analysis, you do need to look at lactate as a part of it. And then for this question, base excess and anion gap, yeah, those are part of assessing a patient's overall blood gas status. But for the sake of this question, okay, we're not going to bother with that. Those are actually just fillers. Focus on what you need to focus on. Base excess and anion gap are for a whole nother video. All right, we're going to focus on the pH we're focusing on the bicarb and we're focusing on carbon dioxide. So again, for this question, we only have our pH and we only have the PCO2, but we don't have any information on the bicarb. Don't let this paralyze you. Work with what you've got and work with what you know. So the pH is 7.3. Is this patient in the state of acidosis or alkalosis? If you answered acidosis, you are correct. 7.3 is a little bit too low, is a little bit too acidic. Now, looking at my other parameter, the PCO2, I see that it's 29. 29. So if our carbon dioxide is on the lower side, that means that the body is in a state of respiratory alkalosis, okay? So you're probably wondering, so this doesn't make any sense. If my pH is 7.3, but my carbon dioxide is 29, which means respiratory alkalosis, then what would be the primary issue? Well, it would have to be in a state of acidosis because the pH is 7.3. And if I see that the PCO2 is 29 or alkalosis, does that mean that the primary issue is metabolic acidosis? And the body's compensating, so now there's respiratory alkalosis. Ah, oh, that, that's gotta be it. So now I'm gonna go to my answer choices and see, hmm, I do see it. I see metabolic acidosis with respiratory alkalosis. My other options are metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis. Both are wrong, straight up, because the pH in and of itself tells you that there is a process of acidosis happening. So you can just check that off. Um, normal, no, because we already know that the pH is abnormal. So that in and of itself is wrong. Um, metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, uh, wrong because the PCO2, which gives me an idea of what's going on in the respiratory system, that's alkalosis right there. So there's no acidosis happening with the respiratory system. And then the last option, metabolic alkalosis with respiratory acidosis. Mm, so if our PCO2 is 29, that's not respiratory acidosis that is very much alkalosis, okay? So that is how you go through those answer choices. For the sake of the exam, just keep it simple. Breathe, don't overanalyze. Focus on the high yield points. You will get into all the details and all the pathophysiology of this and that later. For now, we're trying to answer this question 20 seconds or less. If this video has helped you, please let me know. If you guys want a more in-depth video on acid-based status, I am more than happy to help someone if you, if you need a video on that as well, all right? Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the box below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.